In this video, we're going to take a deeper look at function calling and how we can stream responses with function calling. This is really useful because you can actually break while you're streaming and you can see immediately the result of your responses with function calling and you can actually display this information to your users as well without having to wait for the whole response. In this video, we're going to focus specifically on getting structured data out and not exactly running functions with the function output. As you can see here, we are summarizing a text with a single function calling description. We are getting the important points as a Python list, and also we are extracting keywords using a single function description. Let's start with a simple case and learn step by step how to stream responses and how we can get structured output using function descriptions. Before we begin, I just want to mention the Kohai AI Academy, where you can search all my videos and find the code download links. So kohai.live, link will be in the description. Let's first take a look at how we can stream responses with function calling enabled, and then we'll go back to a more basic example without function calling, and actually talk about in detail how we can manage function calling to get structured output of CPT responses. So here I'm specifying the model is 3.5 Turbo 16K. Make sure to define your API key. I have a function which takes in some text, which is the sample dot text, and some text about function calling that I copied from OpenAI documentation. And it takes in a model and makes a call. We have a single, we don't even have a system message. We just have a single user message, which just says summarize and whatever the text is, reset streaming to true. And we have a function definition. Function definition is a name, summarize document, description, summarize the document by returning a summary. And if there's parameters here, we are defining our arguments, right? Because these are going to be the arguments which we are supposedly going to use to run an argument. In our case, we won't do that because we are just looking to get structured output, which in this case is just a simple string summary. So then the parameters type has to be an object, properties is summary. Its type is string, description is short summary of the document, and we do specify required argument as summary, so we do want this to be returned. And with a function call, we do force it to call this function in this manner. We could have also set this to auto or none. Auto would have decided on its own to whether it respond with a content or function call, and none makes sure that it never responds with a function call. So here we are assigning the response to a response variable. But here we are defining a responses variable to an empty string. And then we, because this is a response is a generator object, so we're going to loop over it. So we say for chunk and response, and then we're going to print the chunk. And then let's actually run this with debug mode. I'm going to press F5 on my VS code. I put a breakpoint here in line 39. You could have also run the debug with this run and debug option right here. Let me show it again. See right here, run and debug, and you can click here as well. So now we're going to run this. We are actually getting the text out of the sample.txt and running this function with that text. Here we are at, we are going to print the chunk out of the generator object. Let's just print it and take a look. See, this is our chunk from the, when we are doing streaming responses, this is what we get. As you see, we don't have message, but we have choices and it's zeroth element because this is a list includes index and delta. So we have to look for delta under here. We have a role, which is going to be assistant. See, it's not responding with content. So it's null, but we do have function call. It has a name and it has argument. So this argument is going to fill token by token. Okay. Let's for, go next. Now we have extracted. We just checked if this delta object, delta key has a function call, which it does. So now we are going to isolate the delta like this in line 41. And then we're going to print that chunk. And as you see now, we have printed it. And it has only the role and content and function call. So here we're saying the summary is the, this chunk's function calls arguments, right? Because it's going to, the tokens are going to accumulate under arguments. And then we append that summary, this each token to responses because we're going to eventually return that response, right? We're going to do something. And then we go uh, one more, append it to it. Responses includes an empty string because the first token was empty. And then we print that. And if I were to actually 
comment this out real quick and then rerun this. We should see that we are getting all the chunks as you see, a token by token under arguments. And eventually, when it's done, at the end, we are printing it like this. So here we are getting each chunk. We are assigning it summary, and I said we are assigning that to responses. We are printing each summary so that you can see. We are actually we were printing the chunk. We can comment this out as well. So if we were to run this again, you should see it printing one by one. So we are printing the string object. We are doing this line does that. And after that, we are assigning it to summary with json.loads response as a summary key, as you see, because this is actually originally a string, but then json.loads turns it into an object again. We return it. And here we print that just like this, because we are extracting the summary key out of it. See? So each token that is printed here, okay, is happening at this point. We are printing each token right there, right here in line 45. In line 44, we are appending it to responses, which we have set to empty string. And at the end, we are returning the summary. Let's run this again so you can see it. As you see, we are printing each token in a streaming fashion. And at the end, we are printing in blue color, using color, the entire summary. Feel free to take a look at EchoHive AI Academy at echohive.live where you can find and search all my videos and find the code download links as well. It's echohive.live. Files for this project will be available at Patreon. Link will be in the description. So let's start with our simple case, main.py. Requirements for this project is OpenAI and term color only. Term color is to be able to print colorfully in the terminal. Here we are defining our models. And don't forget to define your OpenAI API key as well. Then we are defining a function, but this is to make a call to OpenAI. This function takes in as some text. Here I have some sample text, which is about function calling. And it takes in a model, in this case, 3.5 Turbo 16K. So we are only sending a single message, which is a user message, which just simply says, summarize whatever the text is. Uh, in this current case, we are having streaming off, and this is our function definition. So when we are defining a function, we have to give it a name, summarize document, description, summarize the document by returning a summary, and parameters specify the arguments to which we want this function call to return. You know, I believe it always has to be of the type object, and properties can be actually more, be more flexible. Don't think of this example as a written in stone. You can actually add many other properties or elements or are, uh, the additional descriptions, if you like. But this is like a default case. Under properties, we define an argument called summary, which is going to be a string, and its description is a short summary of the document. And then we have this required field. When the required field uh, tries to tempt the model to return whatever arguments you want to be returned, because a function can take maybe multiple arguments and not all of them has to be present for the function to run. That's why we, if you are asking to return multiple arguments, such as we're going to look at summary important points and keywords, maybe it could be the case that you absolutely need the summary, for, but you might not maybe exactly need important points or keywords, which in that case, you wouldn't include them in the required list. I hope that makes it clear. And then we have this function call argument for the OpenAI completion call. And here we are actually forcing the model to call this function, a description. And you have to do this in this format. You have to give it a name and you have to say the function description that you want to call, which is in this case for summarized document. This could have also been auto if you set it to auto instead of this, such as like that, then the GPT, whichever model you're using, will automatically determine if it's going to respond with content or with a function call. You can also set it to none, uh, just like you can force it to call a particular function. You can set it to none and make sure that it calls no functions. So these are your options.
And after that, we are doing some printing. We are printing the response in its entirety, so we can take a look at its structure. Then we are extracting the response message of the this elements of the response, zeroth element of choices, and the message key. And then we check if it contains function call, which in our case will always contain it because we are forcing the function call. It has to be in this format. And then we, since this statement is going to be true, then we get a function name. Function name is necessary, right? If you're going to run a function, obviously. And then we get the function args, and we are just going to use function args to extract structured data from the function call. And you extract the function name like this, and then a function call with the JSON dot loads. So we first create get the response, and then we get the response message, and then we get the function args out of it. And we are printing it. And then here we are just simply loading the sample.txt uh, file, and then we are summarizing it. If I were to run this in debug mode by pressing F5 in my keyboard, or I could have also done this in run and debug as well. And we are going to run this and we are going to stop at line 37. And we have come right there and stop. And we are going to step over using this button. And now we can see that we are printing the entire response object. If you take a look, so it specifies the model, the day is some, so there's some information here. This is the model we're using, and we have these choices. Choices include message. This is the assistant role. As you can see, content is null. It's not returning any content because it's making the function call. Otherwise, I believe function call would have been null and content would have been filled. And there are cases when you set it to auto, you can actually receive both content and a function call. So here is the name, summarize document, and the arguments is a string. Just pay attention to that. That's why we are using json.load. Because as you can see, this is not an object, but a string. And here is the summary. And the summary is right here. And finish reason is stop. And we also have some user statistics, such as total tokens used, prompt token, and completion tokens. Anyway, next we're going to extract the response message, which is the message element. As you can see, we're going to extract this part of it. OK, and we're checking if function call is there, and it is. And we're extracting the function name. If we say hover over function name, it's summarized document. We're going to extract the function args. If we hover over it, as you can see, we get a summary like that. And then we're going to print the response message in yellow. As you can see, the message is in this format. And we did check if it had function call, and it had. Now we are going to print the function args, the summary key of the function args, because we had loaded it with json.loads, right? Function args is the loaded version of that string, and now we can actually call it as an object. And here we go, this is our summary. Now let's take a look at the most complex example, where we are actually receiving a summary, which is a string, and we are receiving important points as a Python dictionary out of the text, important points as a list, and then we actually extract keywords out of it and receive that as a list as well. We do specify all of those to be required, and we do force the GPT to call that function, and we are doing using streaming responses. Now, the differences here is that when we, we have done the exact same thing here, defining responses empty string, Going over the, the generator object uh, with a loop, we get each chunk, and then we check if it has a function call. In our case, it will always have one. Then we extract the delta, and out of the delta, we extract the argument, which will represent each token. We append each token to responses. We print each token on the terminal like this, so it prints nicely. And then we assign all arguments to variables summary important points and keywords equals json.loads responses, right? Dot values. And after that, we are returning both the, all the summary important points and keywords. And down here, we are assigning it by calling the function. And then we're printing each one of them. Let's run this and see how this looks. First, we are printing each token. See so now. It's returning all the arguments as the summary, and then the important points, and then the keywords. After that, this is the summary, this is the important points, and this is the keywords. The only difference from the second file we look, which we're doing streaming, is that 
when we're defining the parameters. We define a summary as a string description, right? After that, we define important points as an array type, and then we define the items. Just be careful right here. If you were to do it like right after the type array, if you were to insert description here, you're going to get an error. You have to define the items if you're defining an array. And the items, we say each item is going to be a string, but together it's going to make an array, a Python list in our case, because we are here asking a Python list of important points in the document. And I just want to mention, see, we, we are not telling anything as a system message or anything to GPT that it needs to extract important points or anything like that. It understands it needs to do that simply from the function description. Keep that in mind. And then another thing we're asking it to return as argument is keywords. Again, to type array items, and we defined items as type string and descriptions of Python list the keyword and arguments. So you could have given the descriptions any way you like. We do require all three of them. You don't have to do this. You don't even have to require any. You can, I believe, lift, leave this out. So we could have only required the summary, for example. Anyway. And then we are forcing the function call to call that function. You could have set this to auto so that it can choose to respond with another function if you had multiple functions or with content, or you can set it to now so it does not respond with function call. Okay, so the rest of the stuff we already talked about. Like I said, these code files will be available at Patreon. Link will be in the description. I do spend every day learning and trying to share my findings with you. So if you do find my content useful, and if you like to have access to the convenience, being able to download the code files, Patreon is the place to do it. I have over 100 projects and their code files, and you can find it at Patreon. However, since I have so many of them, I have created a website from which you can easily search. For example, you can search for function, Calling. It's an instant search. You can find the descriptions to different videos. For example, I did the stress test on function calling. Uh, take a look at the autocoder with function calling capability, function calling deep dive, and function calling chat GPT. The code download links to Patreon is always at the bottom of the video. And you can download the files right here. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. If you like the content, please feel free to subscribe and turn on your bell notifications. Just in a moment, I had created this Echo Hive video trailer. It has some music. I just want to warn you that you don't get surprised if the music is a little bit louder. But thank you for watching and see you in the next one.